Uh, morning everyone. Uh, today I'm going to be making some olive oil and uh, I made a little bit, this is one little bottle I made a couple of days ago and I just wanted to share the process with you guys. First thing you will need is olives. All right, this is just a mix. These are ripe and unripe ones just mixed together. It is said that the riper ones give you more oil, like these ones, give you more oil. And the green ones give you a little bit less oil, but better quality oil. So that's the first thing you will absolutely need is, is olives. These are from my trees. Second thing you will need is a grain mill, like this guy over here. You can see down there. And uh, it makes it, it turns it into a mush. The third thing you will need is an olive press or an oil press like this one here. Right, we'll come back to this in a couple of minutes. Okay, so let's start off with making it into a paste. So we fill up your, the, the, the grain mill. And then we start cranking. This is pretty hard work. Good long time. Okay, so guys, as you can see, this you're gonna get a bit of a of a workout with this. Full body workout. You never need to join the gym again. Just start grinding olives. It's gonna keep you out of mystery for a long time. Chantal, if you could just come in here a little bit closer with the camera and just pull me so they can see what it looks like where the face comes out. Okay, so every time that this bowl fills up about halfway, three quarters, then we just put it in there uh, just because this, this is going to spill. And just be warned, this is an extremely oily story. Um, every time you get this on your hands, your hands are going to be very, very oily. Um, this thing should make an exceptionally good exfoliant, though, because you still feel the rough pieces of the uh, of the seeds in there. But yeah, so this is supposed to be very good for the skin. Just so for interest sake, um, this is... You can see it. Uh, let me it back here. So you can see how it comes out there, obviously. You'd also notice there's no source of heat here. So this is called, the, the oil that comes out of here will be, will be cold pressed, uh, like super virgin olive oil. Apparently if, apparently if you heat it anything above 27 degrees Celsius, you can no longer call it cold pressed. So this isn't heated at all. Okay, an hour or so later, we're done. This took a bit of a team effort because this is a lot of physical work, this. But all right, let me, I'm just going to clean out the, the uh, grain mill and then get all of it in here where I have the rest to show you. And then I can go and press it. So we're now at the point where we can start filling the, the uh, uh, press. I put the shade cloth in there, as you can see, just otherwise all the this is going to just come out the sides so you usually use, use the shade cloth for that so i'm just going to fill this up with the the mush all the way as much as i can from the bottom to the top all right so here we have this thing filled up nicely i'm just going to fold this over like so and there you go, right? Oh, there's some pieces that fell out over there. Okay. And you want to cover this nice and... It must be completely covered with a, with a shade cloth. Otherwise, it just comes out through the pieces of plank when you start applying pressure to it. Right, so this goes on like that. That one like that. Okay. Let me assemble this whole thing and then we'll keep on filming afterwards. Right, so here we have what my camera lady insists I call Jenga pieces. We have the Jenga pieces on. 
the the sort of top of this thing is on and now it's just a matter of starting to apply some pressure and very soon we will see the liquid starting to come out at the bottom so here we have here we have the first runoff happening and uh, now it's just a matter of moving this thing backwards and forwards all the time and it will gradually increase the pressure You can see the oil lying on the surface there and you can see how it's streaming off. And so I just have this little thing that I use for juicing that catches some of the sediment. And now from this point on, it's now just a bit of slog work. And um, this thing tends to start biting better into the wood once it develops more friction. In the beginning, you have to baby it along a little bit. But you can see where that that container is it's already one and a half centimeters about cool as you can as you can see there's a good stream of liquid running off there now I just extended the handle up here by using a pipe and this is now going considerably faster You'll see that we we attach some some planks here at the bottom just to keep the legs in place. Otherwise, this is a very small little press, so it doesn't have enough mass to, to keep it on one spot. So I needed to just make it stronger, you know, make it sturdier. Okay, so I have done a little bit of it. Um, what you see up to there. That is just the juice. This part up here, up to there, that's all oil. Okay. All right. I just wanted to show you guys quickly. This is just a couple of minutes into the process. Let me just put something there to catch any drops. Now, let's get this thing out of the way. That on top is all oil. Let's give it a few minutes to settle. Right, and there you can see the the oil separating nicely from the liquid. And there you can clearly see the droplets of oil coming out of the out of the mush. Very cool. And that's about five minutes later. All right, I'm just siphoning off the liquid now. <clears throat> you can see the little green pipe in there that I'm moving around. And I'm just letting it run into this bottle here. Okay, this is where I'm at now. I just added the second um, pressing. Added that in there. And uh, I'm just using a, I'm using a bit of a thicker pipe. And here you can see where it's all falling into the bottle which is already uh, getting quite full okay guys we're done with this i just want to loosen this up a little and then i'm going to just disassemble this i'm going to show you the the final product i think that's enough okay so let's just now this can just go right These are all the little spaces.
and that is your uh, olive cake at the bottom this is what it looks like Chantal if you can bring the camera up closer that's what it looks like quite hard stuff now and uh, all the all the olive um, oil or most of the olive oil obviously is out of it pretty good fire lighters and then you can just put them down there and cut them with a with a hacksaw later on okay this is um, what it looks like right now I have filtered it through the oil filters to to get rid of the most of the uh, sediment and now I'm just putting it through a coffee filter which will give you which clarifies it beautifully and then you get some nice clear oil so let's give this a couple of hours this this needs to go nice and slow as you can see it's going little drop by little drop there you go okay so let's give this a few hours to finish and then i'll show you the final product because all of that still needs to go through this through this filter all of them were the ones that's murky although apparently the olive oil if it's murky like this it's at its healthiest then it's got um, most of the nutrients in it still Okay, I'm going to stop the video here. Um, I still have a few spoons full of, of the oil that I want to that I want to run through the um, coffee filter. But this is what it looks like. This is what I got. This is about a, a, a bucket full of of olives. Um, the olives were not irrigated in any way. They were really really tiny as well, and uh, so that may be why there's less oil. But this is this is good stuff. This is this is what you're looking for. So this would have probably cost, I don't know, if I if I buy this in a shop, we're probably going to look at about 200 rand or so. So olive oil is pretty expensive. And considering that this is the, the real virgin stuff, this is, um, I'm quite happy with this, with this little batch. So lessons from, from this video, uh, get a grain mill okay uh get an olive press and plant olive trees they are really really low maintenance um apparently 10 olive trees will keep you in an in an off-grid situation will keep you completely uh, uh, uh secure with in terms of cooking oil in terms of lighting in terms of making soap things like that so um, they're a very, very good crop. And once you've planted them, they're going to live for the next thousand years. I once drank coffee in a, in a, um, under an olive tree in, in Jerusalem. And that thing was already bearing olives when at the time of Jesus. And it's still bearing olives. So that was pretty awesome. Thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this, remember to like and subscribe. Bye.